social media. So we're also challenged to reach to a, a third of the nation, which is like an incredible goal. And uh, a third of the nation we have to inform about two parents. So one way, again, is by building up a foundation with social media and putting out on a regular basis our material. So uh, essentially, one uh, brilliant young, young man called Ernst Cam Camger is, is really doing a lot, lot with our social media. He's our social media officer. And he's raised uh, our Facebook following from 4,500 to just recently 100,000. And this was from like October, the uh, year before last. So it's about about 18 months. And it, it accumulates, it gets faster. So we're, we're giving him, we were giving him about 50 pounds a month in advertising. Now it's about 100 pounds a month. And we had a campaign for the Peace Summit. We were asked through IMAP to do something for the, the Peace Summit for about a, a thousand euros. Uh, so we, we also did this. And we reached about uh, 2.2 million, so about 2 million people during that campaign for the peace summit, even though it was after the effect, after the fact. But social media is very flexible. Last year we were seen by 4.4 million people, and this is, you know, this is the 4 million uh, over a year. So, Post reach means one person sees one post during a particular time period, this time of year. So of course one person seeing it once in a year is not so effective, but if you can get them to follow you, then they'll see more of your posts and you can get more, more regular. So this accumulates, so this year already we have got a post reach of, of 3 million. And we hope to double each year, that's our goal, double. And double in finance, double in social media outreach, double, keep on doubling. Because it's hard to to grow that quickly. You need to develop and do things differently and work differently. So in this way, you know, from time to time then we can't bombard our teachers, true parents and so on. But if we intersperse with the other activities, then we can get good material out of it. And particularly we've done, uh, we focus on interreligious posts. So there's Diwali, there's Eid, there's Ramadan, there's Easter, there's Christmas. We catch the wave <coughs> of the social media when people are interested <coughs> in the universe, it's in the regions. Through those waves, then we get a lot of interreligious followers on, on the post. And then they are much more in harmony with the, our ethos. So these are some of the posts and you see by uh, thousands of people sometimes. And some of them, particular Facebook is a bit, bit tricky, but you, if you have a, a statement which is not controversial, then it will get through, you can advertise it, you can post it. So these are some of the others. Valentine's Day. Through this uh, social media outreach, then Earth and I, this is the group started by Sanjay and Vincent Lin, they approached us to, to help them with their social media. And we've been making a, we've made a partnership with them. We've put them on our website, and, you know, we've helped them promote their events, they've been helping us promote uh, World Environment Day and different groups and this and so forth. Also, we've, we revamped our website and the website uh, then needs to be something that can <coughs> attract people, partly for, for funding reasons, because there you've got an appeal, an appeal for donations. And then, right now, it, it's building up, uh, but it's something that we will work on, it's work in progress. But we got approved as a charity, we got approved for Facebook fundraising tools, and our free Google ads. So they will give you thousands of pounds or thousands of euros of free ads if you're a charity. So we're, we're just starting with, with that. Then 
one day, basically, we are all very small groups, but we have good relationships with analysis for peace. Some of those analysis for peace are business people who are potential philanthropists, they're potential sponsors. Others are, are just good hearted people, they're willing to donate for good causes if you want to involve them. My mother's very good at twisting the arms. <laughs> so, Mario himself, Joyce, and Rose uh, have been working, are working on this. The key point is in engagement in this piece. All of these, we're pitching to, to people. Our, our goal uh, right now, it seems incredible, but our goal is we want to get up to 12 million by 2027 because then we can employ second generations to take over. We can employ people. To, to take over on us. But are there results that can be reported? We can mix that up and ask you. But, well, last year we, we raised 25,000 uh, for our resources. Uh, we had four fundraising events. We raised 2,000 each, roughly. Um, we've, we've just started with this digital marketing. We're actually uh, approaching a, a firm which helps raise money from, from public sources. So this consultant is a bit of writers. So we're trying to use all these tools and we're, we're trying to find them in different ways. But these different funding streams need to be worked on, monthly donors, on how to, to raise a very solid base of funds each, each month. So someone puts you on a direct debit, and it's likely that they will continue month after month. And that's something you can rely on. Um, and that's the piece. Some of them are pretty close to us. Engage with them. So we made we have three non-member, non-family federation member uh, trustees of our, our board, and we have uh, five who are our family federation members. Uh, we have uh, these four patrons now. But recently we made two more patrons because they were donating quite uh, considerable amounts of money. And they were engaging with our events, attending, supporting a lot. And association coordinators we are looking for or, or have uh, coordinators, advisors for the different associations. We are looking to, to establish that. But through engagement, then people feel some ownership of what UPF is, and they're willing to dedicate more time and effort, and it's a small capacity. So these are, you know, David Fraser has said, teaching, David Hammer's teaching, and so on. Uh, having education then also helps, because our problem is capacity, we want to trust people, and I can have five branches, six branches in the UK easily, but they would all be campaigning on issues we don't want to campaign on. <laughs> and, and we wouldn't have the capacity to, or the chance to, to stop them without meeting people. So, to create and to engage, we need to educate. It all works together. In a, There's different projects that have been running, and a number of them are really inspired by projects. So this is a monthly, monthly donor letter. I'm not sure which version it is, but uh, this is an example of one. And we can help you with the, the text if you, if you want to read yourself. And this is what we put on the website to engage people to, to donate and to contribute. Uh, to UPS work. So I think that's the last one. Okay. <laughs> development of um, UPF, we've heard UPF does great work. It's an excellent platform for interreligious dialogue. We have great, great wording when you look at the five principles, uh, basic principles of UPF. It's great. But the question is do we need to further develop something under the roof of UPF? We called like a counter 2.0 or VOC 2.0. Why is that? So if I can say one more 
sent so the sentences to this. Uh, Mother referred to the last 400 years, right? Uh, and she, she mentioned not only Luther, but Calvin. And we say normally in the Divine Principle, what happened in these last 400 years is there was a first reformation, or let's say start, first on the Cain side, there was a renaissance, there was a first reformation. Then came the Enlightenment, came the second reformation. Then came communism, and there should be a third reformation, which we mostly believe is divine principle. Then we did something in Causa, yeah, a critique on communism, dialectical materialism, and our counter proposal. But we didn't really win over communism. Communism collapsed, but in the meantime, it has made up more or further developed a dangerous idea that is affecting all, not only English-speaking countries, but also the, the, the Western European <coughs> nations, America, Australia, yeah? This wokeism idea has developed. And uh, the conservative people, the people that feel with the Christian foundation that this is a woke thing, is rubbish, they're not really supported by Christianity. So should we not, question, develop something that refutes this and uh, and to give by this way to give those conservative people that we also need to align with to win national restoration what uh, our ideology and so far we're doing several attempts to present content within upf to lectures for afps um, but uh, it is not a real complete Counter proposal or ideological or worldview or something. And I want to discuss with you how can we do it? Shall we do it under UPF or is it too hard? Do we want to be a more neutral platform in UPF? Must we do something, another organization, or is UPF willing to take on the enemy, the vogue enemy, and call them out for their madness? And, you know, are we ready to fight? Are we willing to go to the ramparts and fight, or are we watching whether the conservative friends do the job for us? Okay, that's what I want to talk with you about. Okay, thank you. It has to be done urgently. So thank you very much for bringing it up. Wonderful word to close our meeting. Thank you very much.